I want you to turn around and say hi to two people you have not met here before. Two. And I'll give you two minutes to do that. Consider it your networking opportunity. If you know the person, don't say hi. Only the people who have business cards remain standing. The people with the business cards take out and give the two people you've met. And you exchange. So what have we done there? We've networked. What else? We've exchanged data. What else? Was the data we've exchanged useful? So in analytics, actually, we use fancy terms, fancy technology terms to talk about things that we do, right? But what you've just done is you've actually modeled an analytic situation. If you didn't understand data analytics at this, this point, you now understand it. And it's as simple as that. We process raw data to make information, which then leads to a decision for which will add competitiveness or decision-making capabilities for your organizations. The health sector is a sector which requires investment. And to invest, we need information. I'll not go through what is there in, uh, in the entire slide here. But uh, we have talked a lot about uh, Virtual 2030. And uh, for us in health, we are saying that by 2030, we want in Kenya to have achieved what we call universal health coverage. That is, uh, all Kenyans have access to quality and affordable health care. And that in the process of getting this health care, they don't suffer financial hardships. You don't have to pay 10 billion to go to South, South Africa. Although you'll be cured, you come back and you are very poor. That's what we call financial risk protection. Now, healthcare delivery is complex. And we need uh, a lot of investments in all the areas I've listed. We need hospitals, we need uh, health centers, we need uh, health workers, we need medicines, we need the information system. We need good service delivery systems, including referral systems. We need to invest in governance. We need to give attention to how hospitals and facilities are being managed if we are going to achieve anything. We also need a good financing system. I need financing system. I'm talking about a system where Kenyans pull risks. I don't have to suffer alone because I've become sick. It's unfortunate. But we should have a system where Kenyans have pulled resources and the ones who become unfortunate benefit from others who don't, don't become unfortunate. That's what we call uh, an equitable healthcare financing system. Now, economists will tell you, will tell you that uh, we have no resources, they're always limited. And that's why we need to really prioritize. And our health sector is suffering from lack of resources. And as you can see, out of all the money the government allocates, whether the national government or the counties, it only accounts for about 28% of what is ex of the total expenditure. And that means that we are going to our pockets to pay for health care. And that's where the problem is. And uh, outside our pockets, we are also dependent, over-dependent on donors. And that means if we have no donors today, we go even much deeper to our pockets to pay for our health. That's where the problem lies. And uh, to add to that, we know that uh, there's a lot of wastage in the way we utilize the, re the scarce resources which we have, whether they are human resources, whether they are financial resources, there's a lot of inefficiencies and wastage as well. These are all facts in our documents and uh, we can show that. Now, since there's too much to invest and nobody can focus on all the areas, as a ministry we have decided to focus on uh, the health workforce, what we call the human resources for health. And uh, I don't know whether you know that uh, there are so many professionals in health. When you see healthcare being provided, there's a tendency to call it for there's a doctor. But I can tell you there are so many, more than 20 professionals who are combining in the right balances to provide healthcare. I've just arrested a few of them. And what is our concern? Why, why do we look at it like this? 
is because you need the right balance of everybody for us to provide quality and effective health care. We need the doctors, we need the nurses, we need the clinic officers, we need the orthopedic technologists, we need all, of, all these health workers. And the governments, whether county or national, must, must struggle to, to achieve the right balance by each facility for us to say we are providing the right health care. So we have got interested in this as a Minister of Health, and we want to get, we want to control both the production, that is the supply side and the demand side. We, we want to know, we want to know in the healthcare market, the market of healthcare workers, where are the doctors? How many nurses are there? How many laboratory persons are there? How many radiographers are there? We, we want to get who are there. And then we want also to know our training institutions, how are they producing them? Do we overproduce in some areas and underproduce in other areas? In that uh, when the counties are advertising that they want to employ radiographers, do they know that whether they are there or not in the market before you waste resources advertising and they are not there? So we want that information to be readily available so that we can, we can have a control of both sides both the supply side and the demand side of these health workers. Now, in, in the, what we are doing, as I just said, that we want to know the training institutions, how many of these health workers by CADA are going that training, because that is a workforce which is going to come to the market for us to utilize of each. Then uh, how many in, in that training, not only, they are not only in Kenya, they are in, uh, others are in Europe training. Then, how many are in the private sector? How many are in the public sector? How many are retiring? How many are exiting that, that pool of workforce? Because that's the information we need for us to be able to project what we need to, even, to, be, able, to be, even be able to budget, let's say for training. How much money do we allocate to Kenya Medical Training Center to train who and when? How much money do we allocate to the medical schools in Nairobi to train how many doctors and when? So you can see the information we are lacking. And that's why when you look at the, the, whole, the whole market of healthcare workers, you, you get uh, maybe oversupply, let's say of nurses. But when you try to look for dentists, or even try to get neurosurgeons, the other day you had the only six. But do we know? Who knows where, where they are? So that's the information we are looking for, for us to be able to plan, budget, and produce these workers, and also monitor how they're exiting the service. That's our need, as a result of that information. And uh, I think that's the challenge I'm giving to this forum, to provide us, that info, provide us a dashboard which requires no training for the county executive to know who is there, which is very easy to use, doesn't require any training, and is graphical, so at, uh, and is virtual, it has maps, and we can be, somebody can be able to see at a glance and know what are the needs of human resource. Questions are usually asked. How many of you think the government workforce is bloated? Oh. Oh, now people are beginning to be quiet. You know, when you have such discussions, everybody's saying, but we are bloated, and we need to hire people, and we need to fire everybody. Now, given that information here, it causes us to think twice about the kind of questions we are asking of government and the kind of requirements that we need to meet in order to provide service delivery. What I'd like now to do is to invite uh, James Hoenaina, who will speak to us about the application side of this story. Today I'll address Daktari's requirements and there are some things that uh, Madam Katabaki raised in the morning that are important to the government including improving revenue collection. How can analytics help us do this? She mentioned that uh, there could be 30% fraud. I don't know, is this true? Yeah? Okay, that's high estimates within the government. Um, insecurity is, a, is something we need to address using analytics, and eventually we have to make sure that we have a mechanism to monitor and evaluate uh, our investments. Okay? So starting with, with Dr. Tari, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of what happened in India. So anybody who has ever studied in India? 
Okay, so, or lived in India. Yeah. Okay, so there is a season called monsoon, and it rains for like a week without stopping. Okay, and after this season, it, it comes with a lot of et epidemics. It could be cholera, it could be dysentery, it could be malaria. Now, distribution of drugs in a land that is as large as India has always been complex. Okay, so how? did they optimize the distribution process to make sure that they can handle these epidemics as and when they come? So they use predictive analytics, and we can go into the details of predictive analytics, but this is not the right forum, being in an afternoon. But they used the algorithm to calculate um, the, uh, the probability of this type of diseases breaking in different regions. So it's not just a prediction on a national level, it's centralized to different regions, and they could tell that in a state like called Maharashtra, there's going to be cholera, but in a different state, Tamil Nadu, there's going to be malaria. And they distributed vaccine or medicine in advance to handle these epidemics as and when they broke out. Luckily, they, the algorithms were correct, and they, that situation was easily contained. So that's one way of distribution that we can solve uh, the many problems within the health industry. Okay? How can we address revenue collection? Uh, and in counties, if you understand the business of a county or a national government tax collector, it's to collect tax. They need to know who is defaulting. That's very important. Instead of allocating resources uh, in a blanket level to go and look for tax or fees that people have not paid, yeah? That's one way of doing it. When you just hire uh, 10 people or 100 people and tell them, go look for people who have not paid. But one way we can use analytics to compartmentalize these people who have not paid is, again, you can cluster people depending on their uh, profiles, okay, so that you have a targeted way of collection. So if it's a county, we do not have to go in a whole street looking for people who have not paid, asking for their licenses. Using behavior with data, you're able to select three shops out of the ten, but with a very high probability of collection. So you don't have to do it generally. So some of the things that we can apply with analytics is uh, this predictive analysis. Fraud detection. Fraud detection is an, uh, another way of looking at, it, uh, at, at analytics. Fraud detection has to be, first, do we have business processes? Are we following the correct business processes, for example, in procurement? Okay? And are the people who are supplying the government related to the people within the government. So again, you start doing your network, uh, social network analysis, you can analyze these people and have a way to pre prevent fraud. And in any, also you can make sure that our, the systems we implement, the business process systems we implement can block these fraudulent transactions. Maybe we are paying two POs, up, we have duplicate POs. We're able to detect this type of uh, duplicates with analytics. And we present this information on a dashboard, so you're able to prevent these things before they happen, and if they happen, you're able to raise an alert so that we make sure this does not happen again. In security, now information about citizens in the morning you were told is very scanty. We agree, some, well, we have information everywhere, and sometimes we also don't have information. One way that we are doing is that, um, and it's a trend, that every crime investigator, sorry, about four Crime, investigator, out, crime investigators out of five are using social network uh, and social, uh, social networks to, invest, to investigate crime. Okay, so we are able, again, to investigate people relations and people behavior within the social networks and to help our police force uh, prevent us from uh, things like terrorism. We're able to use call details to link uh, who the criminals with their networks. We can analyze all this data if we want. So these are things that um, we have solutions, uh, so the willingness on, on the government to invest in this is, is really uh, the next step. Now, finally, on the evaluation and monitoring situation, um, I will take the risk of showing a sample dashboard. Okay, so here we have uh, a, a dashboard where we could, it could be the city of Nairobi, okay? And if I click at the city of Boston, assume in this case could be any city in, in the world, we have KPIs that we monitor. And one of the things that we can put as a KPI uh, is public health, as you can see. 
we have a KPI on public health, if I interact with this uh, kind of uh, applications, I can see all the KPIs we set. In, case, in the case of India, we needed to distribute a vaccine before uh, outbreaks happened. I can fully interact with this dashboard, and I hope it's clear. Okay, so if, if you could read the KPIs, you could see one is ensure that the HIV funds provided uh, equitable access to healthcare. Uh, the Daktari has mentioned something to do with equitable access of, of healthcare. Um, if we go back to look at the, uh, at the security KPIs, we have the police could use this to monitor how many crimes are we reporting, how many crimes are we solving. All this is in the fingertips using the handheld devices. Uh, somebody like the inspector can have very constructive conversations with their teams. Okay, so here we can see that we targeted to reduce the crime, but the crime rates are higher than the target. So we still have a lot of work to do if you can look at the, uh, at the graph. This is fully interactable. I don't think we need training to consume such a thing. Okay. We can use this in education, in schools. I mean, we need to raise the standards of education performance. And the KPIs, education KPIs can all be put here and monitored. And I think this eventually addresses the whole cycle for uh, doing, predict, doing analysis and then uh, having mechanisms for monitoring and evaluation. How many of you know of opendata.geo.ke? Okay, that's probably maybe about 70% in the room. How many people have ever used it to get information, okay? How many of you have used that information in your decisions? Yeah, see? So it's maybe less than 2% of the people here. Yet, statistically, the dashboards that we are seeing here should be able to be available to everybody. Is it because of ease of use, or is it because the information that is stored there is not of value, particularly in the areas that you are transacting it in your day-to-day -day work. So those are questions we need to start addressing in order to make sense of the information that we are receiving and how we are using it and whether it's even usable. Like I got a comment earlier saying that they are all in PDFs. Uh, there's nothing I can do with it. So, <laughs> so that also raises a different question. But the information is partially there. So uh, what I'd like to do now is Yes. Okay. Okay. To ask our last speaker to engage with us uh, on the infrastructure side and how we position our infrastructure to be able to take make advantage of uh, analytics. Now, what I look at from what Dr. has shared is more or less demand side information, and that is just purely on one sector, and we are looking at the health sector. Now, you apply this across board to different sectors where you'll, you'll be looking at the academic institutions, the, the, uh, the media institutions, and all the other sectors, inclusive of the government. You'll be having quite a lot of useful information that if well uh, put together in a way that is meaningful, then you'll be looking at information that is critical and of use to uh, the end user. In this case, the end users being those who actually access information as regards the various sectors that we talked about. Now, just to uh, maybe depart from what my two colleagues have already shared, because I think they've addressed the areas around user requirement and uh, technology solution, uh, I will probably delve into the issue that is least talked about. Because once you have the information, and I, th I think it's already clear that this information that is going to be critical, and number two is this information that is going to be quite a lot. You'll be looking at big data. You'll be looking at information probably uh, of the birth registry that you are talking about in the morning. You'll be looking at uh, information as regards uh, education, which I think is quite a lot. Now, all this information, we need to be asking ourselves where exactly should this information be stored? Uh, I looked at the government uh, national ICT master plan, and they talked about data centers and that kind of, such kind of environments that are going to host this kind of information. Because there's a, there's a past trend and there's a, car, there's a current trend. I think the current trend is people refer to access data in a digital way because they find it a lot more convenient based on the fact that we have quite some good level of, of uh, broadband penetration locally in Kenya and I think as, as we go along globally. 
So at the moment, the, if we look at it from that kind of angle, then after the user information is sorted out and we have a solution done by the technical experts or the technology experts, the other question will be around how do you make this information always available and in whatever volume you should be having the kind of environment that should be able to store this kind of data. And that is where I think both the national, the, the government's plan to put up a data center and various operators' plans to put up data centers comes into play. Today everyone talks about uh, cloud computing being the next frontier, and it, indeed it is, because everyone is keen on cutting down on costs. And the other bit again is, if at all we are to take the angle where we are to cut down on costs, then we need to start thinking of sharing infrastructure but without compromising on the need for security, which I think has been emphasized on uh, well enough by my colleagues. Now, when you look at those angles, then number one, you need to sort out connectivity requirements so that when people want access to this information, they should readily access it with ease and through their preferred vendors. So like we were talking about in the morning, such kind of information should be in uh, technologies and uh, through connectivity uh, service providers that are totally neutral. Or rather, they should be stored in a way that anyone can flexibly get to reach the information whenever they want it with ease and at their own convenience and choice. So that is where we really uh, partner, I would say, from, uh, from a digital uh, from a digital front with the technology experts so that we can offer the NMI solution that will sort out the various sectors of which health is just one, am one amongst them. What has been the issue that you faced in trying to gather the raw data in order to make decisions as regards the staffing levels that you have in, in health? And how have you used tools to allow you to reliably predict instead of emotionally predict what this country needs and how it's going to be applied. We are trying to get information from multiple sources. Training institutions, medical training institutions, the private hospitals, private clinics, government institutions and all that. Now, these, these institutions are not, first of all, they are not networked, so you cannot have a central database to get what you want. You have to literally move from one to the other for you to be able to gather what you want and then come and add up. So it's a big challenge and uh, I can tell you we are still far. What I've tried to describe here is our intention, but it's a very difficult task to, to carry out because that information is not there. The information is also not standardized. The way I want the information, let's say for trainees, if I go to the medical school and I want information maybe by gender, by what, by what, it is not the same format that information is in the Kenya Medical Training Center. So again, it becomes, it becomes a, very, a very big problem. So we don't have a central source of this information and we cannot, uh, it's difficult to get it. Uh, when I listen to the discussion, and that also goes for the other framework we're looking at, there is lack of the appreciation of legal infrastructure. And when I say that, I see you have universal health care. Then I take my mind to the year 2002 when we were in Kipra looking, looking at the regulatory framework in the health sector. And it is then that we observed that the NHIF, out of one shilling that you put in NHIF, only 40 cents was going towards health. So when you are talking about the data and the information, I am still wondering whether what we read in the newspapers with regard to delivery and uh, what happens with the legal infrastructure, whether we are really address, addressing the lack of effective institutions. So as much as you can correct data and look at what is happening in Boston, etc. I wonder whether ICT per se, in terms of just gathering data and statistics, will change anything unless somebody redresses the issue of ineffective legal infrastructure. To that extent, I want to believe that uh, some of our institutions would obey that principle, the road to hell, 
is paved with good intentions. Whereby, we just hearing that you want to give us uh, universal health care, but the institutions that are doing it, governance, etc., are not fully being uh, addressed. So I think that is something we should take away as we walk into issues of how you are going to give people different services. Thank you. We are doing some work with Uta, a project called Utawala, a Strathmore Governance Center, whose uh, intention is to collect data and uh, codify it according to counties, because data now is being done at national level. Now, the issue is data collection at county levels has been wanting, if there. There are no structures for data collection. What indicators should they be using for data collection? And for me, maybe the question would be, should there be a legislative framework for ensuring that research and uh, data collection happens at county levels? Should it be a budget item at county levels as well? So that the people and the frameworks for data collections are done. Because data will be dead if it's not acted upon. And if you go and collect it once, you don't need to meet the same costs of data collections and mapping and all that thing every other time. Once you've done it the first time, you do it and put the infrastructure in place so that the data can be consistently collected without you know, incurring too much costs. So for me, is there a legislative or should we be looking at a legislative framework for that? I've been able to capture the user's needs very clearly. I see the piece for applications to support that and I see the need for infrastructure. It still appears that to connect Dr. Kimu's issues with the other providers, you need another indiv individual, or, um, not regulatory, operational uh, sort of framework or uh, joining the dots. It still appears to me that there's some things that the user needs to fix uh, at the basic level before he appreciates the value that um, analytics would add to his thinking. So I'm not sure uh, whether there are any thoughts from the panelists on how that can be done quickly. We are talking about uh, universal health coverage. And uh, I know we have talked about it for long. He has mentioned about uh, the National Hospital Insurance Fund and all what goes, goes in there. Basically, we know that uh, in NHIF, uh, the administrative costs are above 40% of the total money which are there. So we know all these things. And uh, what we are saying that uh, in, in a new devoted system now, at least we have got a partner now that the counties uh, are very focused in service delivery, and then we can focus our business on the other reforms. The legal reforms, the policy reforms, and all these kind of reforms. And, uh, and we have actually given ourselves a target of for this midterm period, a midterm period adds is a five-year period. For this midterm period, we need to have got our institutions right for universal health coverage. By institutions, including the legal frameworks. You may have heard that uh, we're in the process of uh, actually rewriting the Public Health Act, the mother law, the mother health law, and give it another name, the health, the health law. And in that, uh, Health law is trying to cover all these areas. I mentioned four main, seven main investment areas in health, governance, leadership, financing, infrastructure, systems, and all these. These seven areas are all touched in that health law where, where a law is required to effect a certain reform. So I think for uh, this time we are serious that uh, we want to achieve universal health coverage. I do agree that the solutions are probably beyond technology, that we have to look at other things uh, people, um, the issue within the counties, uh, if legislation is what we need to make sure that we receive standardized data all the time that we need it, then we can propose that. Um, technology will only give you a result and if how you use that result depends on what you have, the, the, the frameworks you have in place. So I agree with the gentleman who mentioned that uh, we may need some legislation. Um, about the question for Lewela, the person to put the dots, uh, to join the dots, yes, we need some sort of consulting, or in my view. Uh, so we need to appreciate that, yes, at some point when you give 
the business user and the technology, these two things have to come together. Um, the business users may not necessarily know how to extract the data, and that is where the consultant then brings these extraction processes and delivers this data to, to the doctor, and then with the tools that he can use self-service and he can do whatever he wants, whatever type of visualization. So we do need certain skills, and these skills, yes, may come from consulting organizations, or IT can support the business users to deliver this type of, uh, this type of work. If I can pick from what my colleague has just mentioned around who do we need, and uh, the fact that uh, and this comment around we might do with consultants, uh, it, it, just, it, it just made me think of an alternative, because if I looked at the kind of solution that I saw in the morning around birth registration, uh, something uh, tells me that that's something that was probably just put up by the lady or a team that is local. And uh, if I look at what uh, Dr. Ari talked about and the information that needs to be put together, something again tells me that this is something that can be done locally without uh, engaging any external expertise. Yes, we can do with external expertise, but I tend to feel this is where we now get to say the solution should come from you and me. Uh, if we leave it that the solution, or rather we need input from a, an external party, then definitely all the good work we've done, all the documents we've shared today will remain to be academic and not really, won't add value. And um, unfortunately, that is what everyone think. I ha I think. I had the opportunity to um, run the Kenya Open Data Initiative for about two years. And the biggest challenge really is becoming the misconception that everyone has about the data that is available up there. And um, what we keep seeing is everyone demanding uh, for new data every single time. But when you ask them, what kind of data do you need? Everyone goes and says, oh, but it's all PDF. I don't think it's very useful to me. The data that is there, one, is not just PDF, um, and I'm speaking now as a really independent person. Um, it's very useful. There's, there's about seven versions of most of the data that are all open and can be useful, including um, Excel. But then also we have to appreciate some of the things like government statistics are not carried out every single year. Um, in 2019, the official census will say that we are 40 million people Although what KNBS does is they also do predictive modeling for you know, the population. So this goes to all other uh, kinds of data sets. So I guess what I'm trying to say is before we start demanding for more data, let's take some time, try to go up to the platform and see uh, what exactly is there. And then there's always a channel to, to, uh, to ask for more data. Thank you. I think when it comes to developing solutions that can work for a region like what Dr. Terry is looking for, for the uh, the, the medical, the health sector, and that would also apply to other sectors of uh, the economy, we need to be able to make use of our local skills. The NILABs and the IHABs have developed a lot of good applications that may need to be supported. No offense to uh, what you presented on uh, uh, it was Boston, <laughs> but Realistically, let's be fair to ourselves, we understand our solutions, we understand our challenges, we understand what we need to do, including our social behavior and how that should best be addressed. And I think within the Nile Hubs and the I Hubs, we have got quite a lot of uh, talent and skill that can develop a, a platform that the health sector can use to collect the data. The challenge is how that platform can be accessed. And I think there is where infrastructure plays a key role. There are a lot of neutral um, infrastructure, shared infrastructure platforms that can be used to host the application and make it accessible to all the doctors, the nurses, the medical practitioners, the midwives, whoever it is that the health center wants to uh, interact with. The challenge is the health center needs to develop the right questionnaire to share and have the right platform on which that is done. There, there's a lot of um, good intentions I'm hearing, but just I, I have a couple of questions based on what I perceive as a reality. First, there's a number of data collection projects sanctioned by the ministry, I believe. Um, a gentleman from Strathmore just said they're collecting data. University of Nairobi collected data. 
there's a DHIS2, I think, uh, sanctioned by DFID. There's an open MRS. So there's, there's so much data out there on health. Um, I think what um, came up in the morning from uh, Mwende needs to be done for every sector. Okay, so you need to get one point of collection, a central repository where all this data is going to go so that it's useful. Because there are three versions of probably same of, the, of replicated databases around. That's number one. Number two is um, if there's anyone from the National Communication Secretariat, um, we need to know, because we can talk about data and analytics. That data has its owners. Okay. Um, especially when you're talking um, in terms of medical data. There's a data privacy law and the Data Protection Act. You need to understand all that before we start even speaking about we need this data, give us this data, etc. etc. Um, the truth is there is a lot of data today that is maybe um, PDF, so some kind of format that can't be easily searchable. Um, what are we doing? What is the initiative that's going back and taking a lot of that data and translating it into a format that we can build on top of? Because we've been around for many years. We have lots of data, and that old data actually means something. We can't just start from scratch. What are we doing about digitizing Kenya, all the data that we have out there? First, I want to discount what they all said about we needing consultants. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with um, MOH a couple of years ago, funded by the World Bank. And one of the first things that people at MOH had um, a bad reaction to was they asked the first question, where is this data going? Because we don't want, you, you've come here under the auspices of the World Bank, and the next thing we're going to only see this data in a report. So just uh, getting off the ground, I think just among the peers within government, before we go this legislative manenos, they take long, they'll take years, it's to sit down and say, any guy who walks in the door, we tell them, by the way, when you're getting this data, you must submit the data either in real time and in this format, and it already starts um, having you collect that um, pool of data in a way that can be forwarded. Because yes, TB, some guys are doing that in, uh, in Eldoret, some other guys are doing stuff, HIV AIDS in Western Kenya, and yeah, people finish the pilots, and what do they do? Mandate done, funds run out, people go back home. You get the, the report after it has, it has been sanctioned, because there's a veto on distribution of these documents. You're told, even as a local consultant, you cannot circulate those documents outside certain circles for um, time X. Um, again, feedback into what are we really achieving? Um, two years ago, went to Silicon Valley with a product called uh, MedAfrica. We had mapped out all, the doctors and nurses all over the place, and you could literally, the, the, the essential need of the service was you could call a practitioner when needed. But then as in, I was interacting with the doctors, I said, you know, we actually don't need this. We already swamped. We don't need more work. Actually, the people who masquerade as us in the communities, actually, apart from the, um, from the rogue doctors, some, the guy who sweeps, he picks up so much information that he goes back to his Kijiji, where there's no medical facility and is actually able to save lives. And here we are um, with a big stick saying quack, 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 and the doctor is saying, hey, they're actually delivering a service apart from if someone is trying to do some backseat operation. So we also need to look at what are we really aiming to achieve? Is it just to say, um, or are we even doing the wrong thing? Are we supposed to probably promote uh, better nutrition so it prevents people from falling sick so they have to go to visit the doctor because it's better for someone in Kibera to grow um, their skumas on sacks and thereby not fall sick and therefore not need a doctor. My last two colleagues who have just commented uh, brings me uh, a suggestion perhaps to Mwende to think on how data can be anchored at the highest possible level with some regime of guidelines. Because if you look at the way some countries, Korea and other Scandinavian countries, data is so valuable that if you don't get data, it has implication. How do you budget? How do you plan? How do you do? So that we don't, we walk away from extrapolation, which we have used for many years in planning. 
Uh, secondly, I think, uh, Dr. Kimo, I think um, what uh, plans, especially for yourself and probably other entities, maybe you can be assisted, so that the capacity building of counties can be expedited on data and uh, various aspects that are required on data, which has been handled at the national level, but now counties are handling some of these functions. Okay, uh, just to close, I think I'll agree with what, uh, what, a, what someone just asked around what are we doing, and uh, I'll relate it to what Mwende, I think, mentioned in the morning. Uh, if I look at our efforts in terms of going the digital way, we have to agree it's a process, so we are starting. So if at all the government's plan is really to start with the national registry, if we can just sort out everything in bits to a level that we can now track and actually evaluate ourselves if at all we are really achieving or on our tracks towards making sure that we achieve that which we are talking about, then I think we'll make all this is going to be a success. So the first quick win for me is we should all be asking ourselves whether at any given time we've been asked for our ID number and besides that asked a lot more information. If we can simply address the question, or rather the fact that just by entering an ID number, that should uh, subsequently have all other basic or additional information as relates to an individual automatically coming into, into the registry, then that is one step. Though we, we need to agree, we are starting off and we have quite some steps that we need to take. Um, in agreeing to all the comments that have been made, um, an example of what we've said there's a lot of data. Daktari acknowledges that there's a lot of data, but there's no connectivity. There's no way of submitting this information. So the problem is, um, is not, it, it's bigger. So development has to happen together. So we probably should give credit where there's credit. If the government is investing in infrastructure, this is good. And then we will use these applications to uh, collect information better. You could develop applications in, in the labs that we have in Nairobi, the perfect, or you could use solutions like ours, which are already platforms which you can build uh, an app that we sh you saw in the morning. That is a global platform localized to deliver local content and to c capture local birth rates. So we can decide all these things. Technology is available, um, and most of the vendors in here, I'm sure, can, can agree with me. So what we need to do is uh, beyond the technology part, the processes, the people. Um, if it's the consultants that we do not want in our environment, uh, do we have IT people who can handle this, these projects? It, it can be whoever we want. And when I say cons consultants, I don't mean global ones, I mean local consultants. Maybe just to say that uh, in the health sector, we are, we are very concerned uh, about uh, data security. And that's why maybe somebody was mentioning that we are a bit sensitive and we always ask, where is this data going to go? Especially when it comes to information and data, which borders on the clinical, that's what me as a doctor and a patient, the data we generate from there, the, the clinical data is sensitive data, and we don't want it to go out of our hands and we go and get it. Maybe in Tanzania, somebody is using a photograph of a Kenyan patient. We don't want that. So, so when it comes to clinical data, we are very, we are very particular. That does not mean that uh, we don't require the data to plan how many health workers we have, that kind of data, which is very important for planning at all levels, including the capital level, that information needs to be corrected for puzzle planning. I agree that uh, we, have many, we have many systems that are collecting data in this country, DHIS and all this. I think you have to realize that you are dealing with uh, the health sector, we are very conservative. And uh, I think one of the barriers we need to open up and be able to be able to work with others so that we can have a common platform for this kind of information. A critical thing, I think, as a takeaway is to think about the legislative framework, the standards that we are going to use in order to collect and, and use this data. We also need to think about how we are going to harmonize this information. Uh, the issue of consultants has been brought up. The issue of somebody to guide the person with the data to the person who's going to use it. That, I think, is a gap that needs also to be addressed. There's also the issue of data security. It has come up in many areas, and therefore some of you here are selling public and private clouds. 
how do you address that issue that is so rampant in the system about how to save the information of the person or thing that you're trying to, uh, to, to address? And then lastly, what is this data for? If we look at the forum we're in here today, one of the key elements of using data analytics is in the area of competitiveness. Uh, Madam Gatabaki, she's been mentioned so many times this afternoon. And it's because she's trying to think about how do we organize ourselves in order to make Kenya more competitive, in order to make our institutions more competitive. So any person who has information, and I, I usually try to use this as an example, how many of you have ever gone to a government office to do a presentation only to find that most of what you're talking about has already been done? <laughs> you know how embarrassing that is? <laughs> And you look like you haven't done your homework. But every place that you could have gotten this information, none of it was available. So how do we harmonize that to allow for all of us to be competitive so as to make a better Kenya?